What's going on, humans, extraterrestrials, and ethereal beings of all kind? Welcome to another episode of What Up, Aliens? It's your host, Austin Kress, a.k.a. Stanley McBlaze, dude. And yeah, the episode's late. My bad on that. I moved houses, as you can tell behind me. And by houses, I mean I moved from an apartment to a condo. Uh, moved in with the girlfriend. Huge step for me. Uh, I've never lived with a girl before. Well, briefly, I did, but she wasn't my girlfriend, and she was just a random uh, lady that I lived with uh, for, for about a month and a half, seven years ago. Um, and moving in with a girlfriend, very exciting. I uh, love the new spot, much nicer than the old spot. I feel like I can breathe now. Um, I'm still in Los Angeles, kind of ish i'm a little bit in los angeles yeah i'm deep in the deep in the suburbs um but you know i'm happy here and it's beautiful and the place is great and it's gonna become a wonderful home we're gonna make it so cozy it's very exciting uh one roommate huge and now i will have roommates for the rest of my life just one just one roommate for the rest of my life um and you're like, oh, but what if you get divorced? Then, bam, back to roommates because I'll be deep in my 30s and divorced. So I'll get roommates again. Uh, so we are, we're here now forever. And that's nice. That feels good. It feels nice getting settled. Things are not unpacked, even close. But we've, you know, we've got some spots in the place that are cozy and, and wonderful. But we still have a long way to go with unpacking. That'll be my week this week. We'll be unpacking and, and finding a job. Unpack, find a job. Make money, put stuff away. That's my week this week. Um, still addicted to nicotine. And, I, and I, I tried to do the threes, and they weren't hitting, so I'm back on the sixes. Fully addicted to nicotine. What are you going to do? Don't do? Don't even start with nicotine, kids. If there's any kids watching, and there shouldn't be, but if there are, don't you dare start with this nicotine nonsense. It is unbelievably impossible to quit. I don't know how people quit it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but here we are. Here we are. We're here, and we're having a good time. We're drinking coffee. We're waking up. Uh I got a very exciting collab that I'm doing today. I will be leaving to do that collab shortly. I'm very, very excited about it. It's going to be fun. Always fun to meet people off the internet. They say don't do it, but I've had nothing but a good time meeting people off of the internet. I think you should meet people off the internet. It's very fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully have a, some good content. Going to a Mark Ribier concert tonight. Very excited to see Mark Ribier. Uh, girlfriend is a huge fan, and I'm also a fan, and so I'm excited to see him live. It's gonna be a blast. Got a concert, um, and aliens, uh, extraterrestrials. Let me know what kind of music are you bumping in the space station, or do you evolve past music? Is music a primitive being's way of relating to the cosmos and our emotions? Or is music an ingrained thing? Like, it, it, does AI listen to music? If we if we created AI and we have AI podcasts now and all that sort of stuff, when things achieve consciousness, do they reach out to art right away? Or do we evolve past art? These are questions that I don't have the answers to. And I wish that I did. Um... Just realizing I don't have my three positive news stories locked and loaded, ready to go. I'll have to pause the video and find those uh, later when we get to the, the point where it's time for positivity. Uh, we're going to start with some negativity. And I'm sorry, okay? that This is what you get from if you want pure positivity, stick to the stony page. If you want a little bit of the real deal, that's what you're here for. The real deal. With Austin Kress. That's the new name of the pod. No, it's still What Up Aliens. Um, Listen, I watched a documentary on Netflix. And if you've seen previous episodes, you know that I've got beef. I got a love-hate with Netflix documentaries. I love them because they are often well done and well made and very informative. But sometimes they milk me. 
And I don't like to be milked. Okay, don't you give me seven episodes of bullshit when there's three good episodes and four absolute filler. Don't you do that to me, all right? I watched one, no filler, all thriller. No filler, all thriller, excellent, excellent documentary, but the end was unsatisfying. And so I'm going to spoil the fuck out of it, all right? If If you haven't watched the Manhattan Alien Abduction on YouTube, and you're planning on watching it, and you're excited to watch it, skip forward. I don't know how long yet, because I haven't started talking about it. But most of this episode is going to be me talking about the documentary, The Manhattan Alien Abduction on Netflix. And there's going to be spoilers. So, but here's my take. You don't need to watch the documentary, okay? You need to just listen to this podcast. You don't even need to watch the doc. All right, because if you do, you'll end up frustrated like me at the end of it. So I don't think you need to. Just listen to me talk about it, and I'll give you all the information they gave you, and I'll tell you stuff they didn't tell you. Also, I'll give you the real deal with Austin Gress, new podcast. Um, In theory, it's a phenomenal documentary. So there's this woman in New York, and she gets taken out of her window, abducted out of her window, and floated up into a spaceship. Uh, No spoilers so far. That's in the trailer. Okay, and here's what makes it interesting. 23 people witnessed this event. There was a blackout. Uh, I think it was in Brooklyn. There was a blackout. They lost power. Cars lost power. A small EMP type event. And 23 people saw a bright light. And this lady get yeeted out of her window. And abducted uh, by a craft. A ship floating in space. Phenomenal. That's amazing. So the documentary starts with her. And then there's another lady. Whose whole deal is saying that uh, this is all made up. And it's a lie. And it's not true. And so she has dedicated her life and time to debunking this. So we've got a perfect start. That's exactly what I want in a documentary about an alien abduction. I want one person who's like, hell yeah, brother. And I want one person who's like, hell nah, brother. And they each bring the evidence. And then I decide if I think it's real or if I think it's some sort of elaborate hoax made to pull the wool over the eyes of the public for clout. Um, and so so there's a, a woman, uh, and her name's Carol, and she's married to a guy named Bud. And Bud's deal is that he creates a support group for alien abduction survivors, and then he puts them under hypnosis, and he uses hypnosis to, to get them to tell the stories of the abduction that were buried in their subconscious. And again, off to a great start. I love everything about it so far. Um, now, I will say, I think that hypnosis regression therapy has been debunked. Uh, I don't know if it's 100% reliable. I know sometimes it works for people and sometimes it just makes people misremember things. I don't think it's the most reliable form of therapy in the world. Um, And I think that the people can be suggested. I think you can plant seeds in people and then they do the regression and then the things that you planted come up. The The seeds that you planted grow into trees of lies and misrememberings that come conjured up. You put someone under, he's like, oh yeah, I, I did. I was in a car accident and I never remembered the car accident or whatever. My uncle touched me in my sleep, things like that. And sometimes it's legitimate. And sometimes it's absolutely bogus. Um, but, you know, take take what you will from that. That Take that. So he's doing these regression therapies. He's got this group of people. And he's got them all, uh, you know, talking about their stories and what happened. And no one believes them. And so it's really nice to have a group of people that all have had similar experiences. And then, okay, good. Now people believe me. Beautiful. Right, and then his his wife's documenting the whole thing, and then he gets this lady Linda 
And she's got the mother of all stories. She's got the abduction. She's got 23 witnesses. And then things start to get unhinged. She's visited by these two government agents. And they want to know what she's saying. And then she gets a letter from them. And it all looks very, very legit. She gets a voicemail from them. And they're telling her, oh, you know, we, we don't want anyone to know who we are because we work. We guard an ambassador in New York City. And we were in our cars waiting for the ambassador. And we saw the whole thing. But we don't want our identities to be revealed because we don't want to lose credibility within our field. So I'm like, all right, you got me, baby. And episode one, two, three, they don't repeat information too much. And they keep giving you new information, and you're like, this is good stuff, buddy. I was locked in. I was also doing a lot of dabs, and that helped, too. That really, I was dialed. It's well done. It's well produced. Um, they've got, you know, well-shot reenactments. The special effects are amazing. It's a great documentary, and uh, so far, haven't really spoiled it too much. Most of that's in the trailer, so you could still watch it. If you want to stop this and go watch it before you finish it, that's all fun and games, baby. But here's my beef with the documentary, man. They got 23 witnesses that saw this, and they interview a couple of witnesses. I imagine most of the witnesses are probably dead. It happened about 40 years ago. Um, the guy who does the, the regression therapy, he's dead um, but basically what it ends up becoming is, yeah, I, I kind of feel like the woman making the documentary is just jealous that her husband is getting so close with this other lady. There's a lot of jealous energy that starts to come through and she starts to believe that everything is fake and she looks into it. She does a little bit of investigating and, you know, oh, her son, her son is also visited and potentially abducted as well. There's all these. She gets kidnapped and thrown in a car while she's wearing a wire? What do we think the odds are of that? What do we think the odds are of her, you know, getting thrown in a car while she's wearing a wire? That seems a little bit too convenient, if you ask me. What do we think the odds are of that? Of her getting thrown in a car while she's wearing a wire. That seems a little bit too convenient. Zero video footage. Obviously, it happened way back when. And we can't prove it. It's just her word against Carol's word, essentially. I mean, it's just two ladies that don't... And they hate each other. The one lady hates her because... Um, she, she's, she's ruining her life by exposing the best thing that's ever happened to her because she's making money off of this abduction, okay? She's got appearance fees. The dude, Bud, writes a book about it. He writes a whole book about this thing, okay? And he's trying to get it made into a movie, and then Carol starts debunking it. She posts a blog post, and just, and then the movie doesn't get made. And all the money goes away. He's doing speaking tours. You know, they're going out and they're uh, telling everybody about their experiences. They're speaking at UFO conferences. Appearance fees. Cashola. Okay, it's a money. It's a cash cow. And that is the inspiration for the fraud, I believe. The reason I think that it could be fake is because there's plenty of money to be made. And because the hypnosis isn't real. Now. They had a letter and that I talked about, but I don't think I talked about why it was fake. Uh, they did a handwriting analysis of the letter, and it's the same. It was supposed to come from this diplomat, but it had this lady's Lisa. It had Lisa's writing, uh, the exact same handwriting. And then the signature was an exact copy of this man's verified signature, and it's so rare if you try right now to do two identical signatures, you can't pull it off. There's always going to be a little squiggle here, a little squiggle there, and that you can't make it picture perfect unless you're tracing it with tracing paper, which is what it seems like this lady did. And, and are, if you're mad about spoilers, first of all, it's been out for forever. Somebody's probably already done a whole YouTube video debunking this thing. 
already, and I'm I am doing you a service. It's not spoilers, it's a service. I am saving you the time and the excitement and the emotional turmoil that I went through watching this, getting excited, this is good, no milking, hype, 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 building, 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 get to the end, no answers. Zero answers at the end of this thing. You go in knowing basically what you knew. Uh, you leave knowing basically what you knew going in. Except we have a little bit of evidence of some forgeries here. We have a little bit of evidence of one of the witnesses. She admits she didn't see anything for real. She just simply saw a bright light outside of her window and she didn't open the window. But there's still 22 other witnesses. And I wish they had tracked down more witnesses. They get like four. They get like four witnesses to, to, to do this thing. And it seems like that she hired actors to to portray um, the agents in, in, in the, the voicemail that they got. The voicemail they got, it seems like they got it. I mean, and I was talking to my girlfriend about it. She's like, you think an actor would do that? Oh, uh, yeah, buddy. Somebody tells me I'll pay you fifty to a hundred dollars to record a voice to leave a voicemail. I'm a broke actor in New York City. Fifty to a hundred bucks to record a voicemail. I'm in. What do you need me to say? Aren't you worried about being a part of the hoax? First of all, I probably don't even know about this hoax. I've been focused on being an actor. Okay, I'm focused on how poor I am and how weird all of these classes I'm in are. All right, I did acting. I, 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 I tried to do acting for a while, and I'll do it again one day. I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus to, I don't know, be funny. Uh, but eventually, I'll get ca cast to be funny in something, and then back back to acting, baby. But I was in this Meisner acting class. The first class you do, it's repeating. You get up there, you say, you're wearing a blue hoodie. You're wearing a blue hoodie. You're wearing a blue hoodie. You're repeating back and forth the same thing. And the inflection changes slightly. And then the teacher is like, oh, that was very good. I really saw the childhood trauma in the third repetition of you're wearing a blue hoodie. And I don't know what the point of the exercise is. I feel like it's just to see if you're dumb enough to be an actor. I, I cannot tell you. You're supposed to, I don't know, to help you read the emotions of your scene partner. I don't know, man. Point is, actors are desperate, and they'll do anything for money, including leave a voicemail. Probably the easiest 50 to 100 bucks this actor's ever made in their life. He's like, yeah, dude, 30 minutes of my time? I, was, I, I saw it. I saw you get abducted by aliens, but I didn't want... I was worried about reprisals from my professional job, and so I kept it secret, and that's why me and my partner visited you. When did we visit? On Wednesday. That's why me and my partner visited you on Wednesday. And we needed to see if you were legit. This is real. Don't tell anyone. Okay. No thanks. No thanks. I was hoping for hard evidence. I was hoping for evidence that is so hard to refute. And we got easily refutable evidence. Also, one of the things that uh, Carol pointed to in her in her debunking of of the um of the woman of Lisa was that you know during the hypnosis sessions everybody else seemed very like uh, 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 like she she said they seemed kind of like drunk in the hypnosis and they were like sort of like remembering things and this lady was like crystal clear she was like there they were they were gray they came in through the window they sucked me out of the window and then there was a uh, an X-ray where she had something in her nose. And she was trying to say it was like, um, you know, an alien implant in the nose, which I liked. But then it's like, yeah, but you could also just tape something to the other side of the nose, fake the x-ray. So we got no verification on the x-rays. The, the documentarians didn't do their research. They didn't go deep enough. If you're filming a documentary and for some reason listening to this, go deep. Ask the real questions. Interview all of the witnesses or tell me that they're dead and then interview their family and see if they have anything They interviewed her son Allegedly he blocked out all of his he blocked out all of his features He was in deep shadow and yet we have footage of him as a child and we know the mom so you could literally just Just uh, we already know your name buddy. We can already look you up. Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? Okay I don't know why this guy feels the need to hide, but he said it was real also. 
But I don't know, he's probably still lying for his mom. I would lie for my mom. I love my mom. Of course I would tell a lie for her. Of course I'd say she was abducted by aliens if she needed me to say that to make a little extra cash on the side. Of course I'm lying. So I went into it and I was having a good time and I, I was really excited and I was like, ooh, yeah, this is it. Real documentary about aliens and we're going to get some hardcore evidence and there's all the witnesses. Uh -huh. And then you get to the end and you're like, I don't know. Maybe it happened. Maybe it didn't. It left me in the same place that I'm always in, which is that I believe that, that you're out there. I know you're out there, aliens, and I know you're listening to this. Because in a long enough time span, you'll find this, and you'll listen, and you'll be like, ooh, let's reach him, and then you'll try to send a message back to me, and Earth will have imploded on itself. Too late, oops. So find me now, in this timeline, in this light year. Find me, okay? Reach out. Say what's up. Send me an email. A DM. Tell Telekinetically. Connect, connect with me, okay? And again, if you abduct me, take the girl with me. Take me and the girl. Okay, we gotta go. We go, we're a package deal, all right? Don't you dare abduct me alone and leave the love of my life here on Earth. I'll be so, so mad at you. I will not come to your ship in peace if you take me alone. I'll go down fighting. You'll ruin your sample, okay? So, that's the Manhattan abduction. I, I mean, what are we doing? Uh, do a real documentary, please. Please do a real good one. And I've seen good ones. Unexplained. I like Unexplained. That's a good documentary. There's a, Netflix is dropping another one on Friday. I'm going to watch that. I'm interested. I want to believe very badly. But every time you try to put up a documentary, you leave holes. Close the holes. But good job on not milking on that one. Okay? It wasn't the milk fest. So, and I'm sure there's stuff I missed, so you can still watch it and enjoy it. It's a nice vibe. It's kind of a spooky vibe. It's a little scary, a little Halloween, a little, ooh, turn the lights off. Let's get a little creeped out, you know? It's good. You should watch it, but don't go into it thinking it's going to solve anything because it's going to leave you with more questions than answers at the end, all right? So I may have saved you three episodes, three hours of your life may have been saved in 20 minutes here. Okay, so don't, it's not spoilers, it's a service. I'll tell you, when there's something good that you should watch, I'll give you a spoiler-free hype up on that thing, and I'll hype it up heavy, and then you'll watch it. Okay, but for right now, no dice. All right, no dice. Um, all right, well, let's do a little check-in. Let's check it in, shall we? How are we feeling today, everybody? How is everybody feeling today? Did I get another text from a frigging, oh, yeah. Vote, 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 vote. They want you to vote. They're going to keep texting you until you vote. I really hope that I have done enough freaking stops. I, I've sent the word stop to so many people. I feel like a guest at a ditty party. I'm like, stop, stop, leave me alone, stop. And they just keep texting me about voting. And it's like, listen, I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. Your text is not going to change my mind. What do they think? They think by bothering me, I'm going to do something? When in history has that ever worked? It never works. N bothering someone? Come on, leave me alone. I'll do what I'm going to do. I'll make my own decisions. I'm an adult. Stop texting me to vote for people. Propositions. D vote yes on this. Vote no on this. I don't know. I'm not here to tell you how to vote, if to vote. Do, what, do, do you. Do what thou wilt, to borrow a phrase from a very dark source. Um, all right, how we feeling? How we feeling? How we feel? I haven't done a daily check-in in forever. Um, well, October 24th is my last check-in. My goodness. Okay, how am I feeling today? Dude, I'm feeling rad today. I'm having a great day. Happy, excited, grateful. Boom, relaxed. Boom, content. Boom. Things are, things are looking good. I'm getting emails about opportunities. It's very exciting. Um... I, I'm going to a concert tonight. Very exciting. I just moved in with my girlfriend. Very exciting. We're having a good time, man. We're having a really, really good time. Uh, I'm still broke, but soon I won't be broke. Soon I'm going to crack the money code. I'm going to start paying attention to my finance. I'm going to start checking my bank account and in and out. How much is going in? What's going out? I'm going to be on top of it, bro. I'm going to be a real adult, bro. It's time. It's time to be a real adult. I'm very excited. 29. Time to grow up. Let's do it. Um, all right. Positive news stories to stoke your week. What do we got? We got some positivity heading your way. Flying at you. 
f f f f f f lying at you. This uh, there was a lady who was on a train tracks. She was standing on a train track, ready to end it all. Standing there with arms wide open, waiting for the train to hit her, send her to the great beyond. When the driver of that train notices her, stops in time, thank God, gets out and talks to her, and they end up falling in love and getting married. That's beautiful. So maybe, maybe you need to get off the app and start standing on train tracks. Just kidding. Please, for the love of God. This is a comedy podcast. Do not stand on train tracks. Oh, my God. I can't believe I have to say that. But it worked for this one couple. So, okay, no, never mind. Don't stand on tracks. Get a job driving trains. And when you see a lady who's at the end of her rope, at the end of the line, if you will, stop the train and get out and talk to her. And turns out she's a baddie. <laughs> and then you can fix her, bro. Bro, you can fix her, bro. He fixed her. Uh, they probably fixed each other, to be honest. She just needed somebody to reach out and say, hey, you're doing okay. And she was like, I am doing okay. Let's get married. And they're, they're getting married. It's the strangest love story. But it started out as a lady ready to end it all. And she didn't. Instead, she began it all. Instead, And in many ways, she did end her life, her old life. But she kept living and started a new one. So maybe don't kill yourself. Kill the habits that are making you feel bad. That's the real advice here. Do not kill yourself. Stay alive and fix stuff slowly. That's what I'm doing. You think I don't want to kill myself? Huh? Every day. Every day I want to, and I don't. And I keep on trucking along, and so can you, man. That's why we do the podcast, to keep you alive and me alive. We're having fun together, and we're staying alive. Huh, 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 stay alive. He was 47 years old. And he found the love of his life. So just so you know, that person is out there for you. You're going to find them. You're going to find them. Um, dude, there was a dog that was, that was adrift, floating down a canal in a shopping cart, adorable, floating on a shopping cart filled with seaweed. And um, somebody rescued him, gave him a home. Very similar to the train tracks, lady. That dog probably threw itself in the river to end it all. And it landed on a shopping cart and said, all right, we'll see where this goes. And it led to a new home. So I think that's two stories in a row that just because you're at the lowest point in your life, don't you dare give up because right around the corner could be the love of your life, could be a new home, a new job. Keep on keeping on, okay? Things might look bad right now, but they're not as bad as you think they are. A lot of times, most of our problems are just in our head and we're creating them just blah, blah, just a chaos factory up there of anxiety and fear and we're just making things up and like, I, I, everything's terrible. I, my life is so bad. And then actually, you take a deep breath and you realize things are actually going to be okay. Everything is temporary. Change is constant. And maybe the universe is conspiring to make you happy. I stole that from the movie Beach Bum with Matthew McConaughey. On Patreon, I talked about my top 10 favorite movies. Check out the Patreon. Um, Missouri School wanted to rename the building, so they named it after the janitor. Nice. That's cool. That's, that, that's a nice reminder to like, you know, you got somebody in your life that's putting in a lot of hard work in your life, and uh, you want to make them feel appreciated. Name a building after them. You probably can't do that, but just reach out. Maybe just send a text and be like, hey, I appreciate you. Thanks for making my life a better a better one. Thanks for making the world a better place. Send a little text, a little thank you. This dude was mopping floors for 15 years. I got the school named after him, dude. That's awesome. That's incredible. You probably would have preferred a check, but you take what you can get. Underfunded school, a couple of words on the side of a building. It's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. It's a nice thing to do. And it shows appreciation to people who don't always get appreciated, even though they're the ones that most of society is underappreciated people. Yo, shout out truck drivers and garbage men and people that keep our, our society swimming and flowing and we don't shout them out enough. We don't give them the props. The world would crumble without janitors. We would live in a trash heap without janitors and garbage people. They're the ones really making a, a, a difference on our planet. And so it's awesome when somebody like that gets friggin' uh, appreciated, dude. 
That's a positive story. And that's also, hey, maybe you're doing stuff. You're feeling underappreciated. Still do a good job. Just keep on doing a good job. And one day you'll be appreciated for the stuff that you're doing. Because you're rad. And I believe in you, even though I don't know you. All 200 of you that have listened, I believe in you. Okay? That's the positive news. Stoked and steamed. What am I steamed about? I'm steamed that I'm putting this podcast out so so late. I'm sorry, guys. Ugh. I would have liked to have put it out on time, but I moved and I didn't plan ahead and I got caught up in moving and now here we are. Podcast is late, 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 late. It might be a full day late. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm doing better slowly but surely, but hey, it's going up. Every week we're posting something, so that's still still staying consistent. Still staying very consistent, all right? So thank you for tuning in. If you're in Los Angeles, I got two shows coming up, one on the 16th of November. Uh, that's my show, and then that I'm producing. Got a hilarious lineup, link in bio for that. One on the 21st, I don't have the link yet. Not my show, show I'm on. Going to be a really good time. Either way, Los Angeles, San Diego, December 7th. I'll be in San Diego. Um, subscribe to the Patreon for longer episodes. Thank you so much. Stay stoked. Have a rad day, and do not crash those spaceships. <laughs>